Hey everyone, my name is Danish and today I'm very excited to check out Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Now, if you've seen other videos online, um, there are many, many more professionals out there who will give you that sort of outlook, but I'm an absolute amateur when it comes to Final Cut on the desktop. So I kind of think that this is catered towards me, uh, towards the amateurs. And if this video helps you in any way, don't forget to like and subscribe. And while I'm going through the app for the first time, do let me know in the comments what you think. But apart from that, let's jump right in. I need to get one that says, fuck off, I'm editing. I need to get one of those. Hmm. All right. So kind of, I'm going to just take you guys through logging in um, right from the start. I've got, uh, I'm just going to try the month. Oh, there's an already subscribe button. Let me see if that works. So while that's loading up, okay, you do not have a subscription. All right. So, it, so well, that's something to learn. If you have a subscription uh, for it on the laptop, it's not going to work here. But let me just pop my touch ID there. And I think we should be good to go. All right. Um, I'm just going to use, I'm going to start a project of my own. Um, I've, I had a little bit of a project here which I wanted to get into. So let's do that. This is the Ford uh, F-150 Platinum. Now, um, as we can see, there are multiple places to import from. There's photos, files, camera, and obviously starting with a blank one, I want to import from my photos. I give it access to all of them and I'm just going to scroll down here and luckily there's a bunch of selection that's already happened. Um, but yeah, you can select multiple files, but from what I've seen online, you can't, you can't get um, stuff off, sorry, you, have, you can't edit off an SSD. Uh, that's not something I'll try right now, but uh, that seems to be the case. As far as Apple's concerned, you have to always expect stuff like this. So I'm just going to add these here and get a project created. Okay, so, um, all right, so from the looks of it, it doesn't seem to look the way it does on Final Cut Pro on the desktop. That the one of the reasons for that seems to be that they want uh, a whole lot of touch improvements. Um, first things first seems to be this jog dial over here, which is there. To control various features as you would need them I guess since we haven't loaded anything on the timeline uh, it's not really going to show up right now so let's start on that front now obviously the first thing I want um, is I want a bit of an intro to the car that we're kind of looking at so let's see that right now so I think here with the jogger head Um, that seems to be the case for this in this case right now I'm just gonna switch off the volume but so the jog so this jog dial seems to be the sort of way to navigate stuff and that's kind of cool all right so let's add a few more clips in here right um, and let's keep that going now one thing I'm noticing right away is how intuitively my hand went to the volume section to adjust it and I think that's the kind of idea here that you have this two-handed sort of work uh, and that's like that's how it'll kind of go for you I guess so um, let's add one more of these let's remove the volume immediately and let's just switch that off and let's play all right so we've got this clip okay we've got that clip and yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. Now, let's see how intuitive it is with touch. It seems pretty good, right? Uh, let's do this here as well. And let's get this all the way here. Yeah, that definitely is intuitive and I'm sure it would be even more precise with the pencil. Let's kind of watch that again. And yeah, 
Cool. Okay. So that's as far as importing to the timeline goes. Now, one thing that I noticed off the bat is that there's no events or anything like that. You can't create folders um, over here. I guess the idea is to be a bit of a starter pack, but that's fine. All right, um, next up, let's jump, I guess, a bit into the interior of the car, right? I wanna add a few of those clips and that made a gap because I did not lay it well. Um, but again, here as well, you've got the volume section and I wanna add a bit more, so Oh, that's interesting. Took a minute. But yeah, I guess let's just add one more. And there we go. All right. So one thing I guess you should know about me is that I'm not really a professional editor. Um, I've just learned what I've learned over the years. So I guess you can kind of come along with me on this ride and just see, you know, what I see. Um, I, I might miss a lot compared to professional editors out there, so feel free to let me know in the comments. And if in general you kind of enjoyed this amateur tour, I'd be more than happy if you like, liked, subscribed or anything to support the channel. All right, um, cool. Let's see what we can do uh, apart from that. You know what? I'm going to jump into using my fingers. So one thing I've been super excited to try out is um, let's expand, first of all, can we expand the timeline? Very easy, all right. Now, one thing I've been super excited to try out is I want to add text over this. So, oof. Ignore my handwriting, please. You know what? Uh, Y'all deserve a little better handwriting, I guess. That made no difference whatsoever. All right, so cool. That added it automatically on top, which is cool. Um, now there are viewer options here, which I'll get back to in a minute, but let me just play that. Oh, that's cool, that's pretty neat. Let's just see that again. That's nice. I like it. I like it. It could be something useful to use. I mean, listen, sometimes I just want small animations or a little arrow. Uh, and I think that adds a bit of a personal touch that you can kind of customize to yourself. And um, I think that's what this is aimed at, uh, that sort of amateurishness of the video. So that's good to see. All right. So I'm going to switch the jogger off for a minute. Let me just see how I can adjust... Um, viewing options your background you've got colored you've got checkerboard and you've got black playback you've got performance and quality uh, you've got image analysis as well you can see waveforms you can see histograms and of course you can see the vector scope as well i'm going to leave that off as well um, one thing i seemed ah there we go that's what i was looking for um, so again buttons over here so to adjust this so if I wanted to kind of adjust this to make it a more comfortable view, you can do that, right, for the timeline. So yeah, so that's kind of where we stand on this front. Um, you've got, let's say larger, oh, so let's, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. This is exactly what I wanted. wanted a smaller wanted it to be smaller so I can adjust it better. There we go. That's much more to my liking. All right. Now, uh, let's see what else we can do. Now, you've also got um, the animate section for video animations, but it seems to be a little smaller. All right. So, let's hop into the inspect. At this point, you can obviously transform. Um, so, if I were to select this, I can take this in further a bit. You've also got your enhancements in this scenario. Um, you've got voice isolation, loudness, and noise removal. So that's nice to have as well. And then last but not least, you've got effects. Let's see what we can add. You've got masks and keying, color adjustments. You've got your blur, you've got distortion, and you've got stylize. So just for the heck of it, let's just see stylize. So there's pixelation, which you can customize as much as you need right so you've got that 
there as well. So that's there. Sorry, let me just get back into that. So yeah, so you've got that as well. Now on um, this side, you've also got the mode to access the pro camera. Um, you've got the pro camera here. Um, it's supposed to be really nice. I'd like to try it out at some point, but a really good kind of neat feature to have when um, recording, especially the power that these devices have, pretty cool. Then obviously this, so this was to import, this is for the camera, this is to the draw, and then this is obviously to export. Now here you've also got your um, effect, you've got your transitions. So for example, over here, if I want, suppose hypothetically, if this were my fast last clip, I can just take this, pop this on, add transition, and let's just play that and check it out. So there's a little fade there. And then I'm sure there'll be one at the end as well. So then you've also got tutorials and service and stuff like that. But from, from what I'm seeing, the idea seems to be that you can do all this and it's very, very intuitive for fingers and for pen. And I think that that's kind of what really Final Cut wants, right? What they want is for people um, who maybe who've never got onto editing, who have iPads kind of hop on. Now you can only do this with the M1 and M2 iPads, um, but still it's kind of a start. Knowing Apple, there'll be a trickle down effect. Uh, their older processors are very powerful as well, or this is just their way of getting more people to buy. Um, there are other videos out there talking about a lot of problems that are people having, especially the Verge video just made it seem horrible. But I think that this is, for someone like me, a great starting point. Now, I, I don't exclusively use a lot of features and my shooting is largely on an iPhone. So for me, this is great. Um, if, to have that sort of editing power on the move, transfer through AirDrop and stuff like that. As an amateur, I don't particularly see a major issue with what Apple has presented right now. But of course, I literally touched this for the first time right now in front of you guys. Um, if you appreciated this first look, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see. I'd, I'd be glad to check it out for you guys. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.